I'm Robert Therrell. And I'm Chase Bridges. And we're both screenwriters. Listen along each week as we either work together to write a new short film or go head to head with competing movie pitches. This is Written By. was the night before written by, and all through the night, not a screenwriter was writing, not even Mike, <gasps> the number one podcast in the world, behind all the others, rocking their world. There was two hosts, Robert and Chase. Both of them come from the same race. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Uh, <laughs> welcome to Written by Podcast, the number one podcast I in the world. I thought you were half native. That's that's not I the am. same race. I, I'm not half. Oh, you're not I'm half. Not half. <laughs> don't Elizabeth Warren me. Okay, okay. I don't want to be attacked online. <laughs> but I, I am, I'm not a purebred. I'll say that okay, much. sure. Yeah. I mean, look, who, who's purebred anything at this point? Um. If you're purebred Eddie it race, your cousin, you're the weird one. <laughs> your yeah. cousin is related to you in more ways than cousin. <laughs> <Sure>. <laughs> incestual relationships is what i was insinuating what a, what a great way to start this podcast yeah, yeah you know yeah, yeah. i start off with a little uh little story it's, book. it's not more unhinged than our gorilla episode so <laughs> <laughs> yeah our most watched episode not because it's any good that that is crazy it's never the thing you think is going to be no. popular or the thing you're proud of that gets no. <laughs> popular it's, it's and it's our most watched episode because two reasons yeah the bit, the one, the first reason it became the most watched episode mm -hmm. is because on an episode of Church Stories, PD brought up the joke I made. Yeah, and I was like, "Well, we can't say it on here." So everyone so, listening <laughs> went to go listen to it so they could hear the joke. And then on Twitter, someone reposted the right. gorilla joke yeah. of eighteen blah blah blah, yeah. and I responded with a link to the episode, and it, uh, it got kind of blew up on there. I forgot about that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. We also we had we had Abby Gilbert on that episode, which you always Very forget is a is low key an internet celebrity in her own right. Yeah. <laughs> Just mule celebrity. Yeah. If that's the that's um, the app. My first night in college, I met yeah. Abby. Okay. And she told me about that. Okay. And I was like, dude, I've seen those ads. I was blown away. Really? I was like, I love that song, Seven Years Old. Yeah. I was like, I oh, I'm a huge fan, ma'am. Wow. And she didn't like me. <laughs> <laughs> she didn't like me at all. Oh. Yeah. And then uh, you know. Yeah. I mean, look, if I'm being honest, there's a lot of people we work with right now that I don't think liked me when I first met them. So uh if we're so. being even more honest, I think there's people we work with that don't like me now. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, welcome to Written by Podcast. <laughs> it's our rival pitch week, and yeah, son. we're doing something a little different this week. We we wanted some listener suggestions. We got a really interesting listener suggestion on our Instagram. Yeah. Uh, who is the listener? You had his my boy, username. my boy Matt. I think his name is Matthew. Matt Matthew Herbert. Yeah, Matt Herbert suggested we pitch reality shows, which. Isn't typically what we do. We typically do feature films. But we were both like that reality shows. Yeah, yeah, sounds like a lot yeah, of fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we are pitching reality TV today. Hey, and uh, I hope you brought your A game because mm -hmm. I don't mean to be. Uh, I don't mean to be aggressive. Yeah, but I'm kind of kicking your ass right now, man. Yeah, you. Uh, <laughs> you officially lead by one. If uh, more votes don't come in, you're going to be leading by two. I mean, and I'm gonna be honest. Am I gonna step up my game? No, <laughs> I've been putting out heaters. It's not my fault y'all are voting for them. It's not my fault you don't get the genius of the ice cream movie. <laughs> What's funny is <laughs> last season 
I felt the same way because I was doing those goofy <laughs> yeah, things. I'm like, yeah. are you guys not understanding the comedic genius that I'm bringing yeah. to the table? And so for this season, I was like, I'm bringing my A game because I'm sick of losing. I think we we talked about this early in the season. We kind of switched we did. roles in the rival pitch. We this did. Season. You, you started wanting to have some more fun with yeah. it, and I wanted to be taken seriously. <laughs> But uh, no, it, it the truth is when we looked at the Instagram suggestion, yeah. we we're like, that's fun. You were like, I already have my pitch. I have a reality show pitch. I have an idea that I've had for years. Yeah. And this is this is going to be great. I I shot a pilot for it. Okay. You didn't tell so me this. I have the footage. It's on YouTube right now. Unlisted. It's on YouTube. It's unlisted. Okay. Only I can see. I never released it. Huh. Uh, I think it's your week to go first. Okay. So I'm going to I'm gonna save the rest of my okay, stuff okay. for what is my turn. But okay. Yeah. I'm super excited to know what you came up with. <laughs> okay. Because you didn't have a lot of time. We came up with this like yesterday. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and I was, man, my internet's been out of my place. I was running around all day today trying to send projects off. But uh, yeah. I do have an idea that I'm pretty proud of. All right. So. <laughs> Before you get into it, is this like the Bachelor reality show or is this like... I guess we should talk about this. There are a lot yeah. of different genres of reality show. Yeah. So I know you're a big fan of Survivor, which yes. is like competition. There's also a lot of, you know, wilderness survival type reality shows. Yeah. There's, of course, all the dating shows. Yeah. Ton of dating Not shows. Not a big fan of those. Yeah. Yeah. Then there are other variations like technically all of Nathan Fielder shows are reality, reality shows. shows. There's like Jersey Shore. Yeah, yeah, there's a bunch of people in a house. There's Kardashians. Dog the Bounty Hunter. Yep. All the Ghost Hunter shows oh, are reality yeah. shows. I thought about doing a ghost thing for a little bit. That'd be sick. <laughs> yeah, so for my reality show, I wanted to do a dating show. Okay. Dating shows okay. are, they're weirdly fascinating for me. I uh, I had a girlfriend that I, I watched a lot of that stuff with like ages ago, and you know, it, it's been years since I've actually kept up with one, but I always found them a little interesting. I was never super invested with them, but it's kind of like, a, you know, just going to the zoo and watching a bunch of crazy animals just run around. Like yeah. there, there's a, a novelty to it. It's really hard to look away. Yeah. At. It's like a car crash. That's yeah. what people call it. Car crash TV. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, in, in uh, my office where I work, they play those shows all the time. Yeah. I can't stop watching right but yeah. i hate it yeah it makes me feel bad kind of yeah yeah it makes me sad yeah how terrible these people are being yeah no years ago i watched an entire season of love island and oh man love island is is Woo. wild it's it's also like being the person i am and having friends similar to me like the yeah. type of people that go on love island is a completely different person that i never interact with and so it's weird seeing them in the watching wild. those people talk <laughs> yeah exactly exactly so i wanted to do a dating show but of course i wanted to have a little twist because again my favorite reality shows are nathan fielder's shows i love nathan for you like the the core concept of it is great, but also just Nathan's awkward personality, and then the rehearsal, the way he, uh, it's kind of his inability to socialize. He's made a whole show out of trying to discover how normal people act, and he, yeah, like ends up just kind of messing with normal people's life and his quest to become normal. Yes. It's a, yeah, and so there's something interesting there. So my show, the the tentative title is, I'm calling it The Hot Bubble, <laughs> which oh, uh, <laughs> man. <laughs> we've talked about the hot bubble is a is a term that comes from an episode of 30 Rock, which is <laughs> Tina Fey's character is dating a character played by John Hamm. Yeah, they're getting along great. But then she realizes <laughs> John Hamm's character is super hot. And being super hot, he's had a completely different experience in the wild. Yeah. Everybody treats him so much nicer. He gets gifted things randomly just because he's very attractive. And like normal people don't live that way. Yeah, it must be hard for these other people. Exactly. They aren't like us. I know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I won't know anything about that. 
Oh, man. But, you know, some people, not me, are like, well, you know, the <laughs> only thing holding me back from finding the perfect person is I'm just not hot enough, you know? Yeah. If, if I was super hot but had the same personality, I'd be sweeping the dating game, you know? Yeah, yeah. Exactly, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I feel everybody feels that way. Yeah. And, it's, 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 you know. This isn't a completely original concept. Shows have explored this. Love yeah. is blind. The whole thing is like, do you do you Dude, get along with people without looking at them? That's the show that they put on in the office all the time. Yeah. That show is crazy. It's yeah. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah. But uh not to interrupt, yeah. but this is my thought about Love is Blind. Okay. The whole thing is like it's supposed to be the setup of like, hey, yeah. loving someone before you get to see them. So that way you see that looks don't matter. But then they just cast hot people. Right, right. 100%. <laughs> see, this this is what my show is getting at. We're going to fix this problem. Oh, so it's for Chase. ugly people. So <laughs> the concept of my show is we are going to cast 10 really attractive, conventionally attractive, supermodel looking people. The type okay. of people that would not be out of place on a Love Island type okay. show. Those people are all on this island. They're all on the hot bubble. They're all <laughs> yeah, in yeah. this villain getting along. I was playing around with like, maybe instead of Love Island, we could do the Love Peninsula. And they're like, on a, <laughs> I don't know. I don't Florida. know. Florida. They're on Florida. <laughs> yeah. But but it's, it's 10 people, five guys, five girls, and they're all in this area together. Mm -hmm. The catch is one of the people is being fed lines by a completely normal looking person okay. he has an earpiece in this normal person is in a control room watching everything and we're gonna call the actor guy the avatar so oh this is sick this is already <laughs> sick this guy not that it's like okay to assign numerical value to someone's appearance but this guy is like you know a four to six on the scale. Yeah. He's uh, sitting in a control compare room. Him, compare him to an actor. Like Steve Buscemi. Yeah, yeah, you know. <laughs> so that way, we all know what we're talking yeah. about. We're talking about Steve Buscemi. I think I think a Danny DeVito is a good... Because, yeah. you know. In his, in his he's youth. a little weird looking, but he's he's a great person, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. And he's he's got a great personality, great sense of humor. If you were to, like, look at Danny DeVito as a normal person walking down the street, you, like, he wouldn't turn your head, but, like... You know, Danny you've heard Danny DeVito talk for five seconds. You're like, this is you the best guy ever. Yeah. This is He's the type of guy. Whores. <laughs> yeah. Whores. <laughs> whores. I, I gave Shama a note about, I was trying to get him to pronounce wet a certain way. Yeah. And I was yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> How Danny DeVito yeah, says yeah. whores. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, so it's 10 people, but one of the guys is an avatar. He That's has a sick. secret earpiece, and there is a normal-looking guy in a control room who is feeding every single line this person says. And we're following this guy, and we're going to see, one, do, how does he fare with all the other contestants and getting the person that he wants? And mm -hmm. so like a Love Island type show, you have all these activities planned throughout the day. There's a bunch of group mingling, and then we separate them for some one-on-one -on -one dates and, like, some smaller group activities. And, of course, the people that want to get together are trying to talk to each other. Multiple people want to talk to one person. There's competition. We're going to see how this normal guy fares. And so... That's pretty cool. In the months leading up to this show, our normal guy and his avatar have been training hard so that it really looks like this guy is saying his own things that he's not being fed stuff from an earpiece so you're, so you're casting like an actor in this for the avatar exactly guy. we'll get to this more later but yeah. they they have a very intense role in this show okay this cool. guy but yeah so they've they've trained they figured out the correct method to like get stuff through the earpiece and the guy has gotten used to the control module basically he has all the footage that the normal live action producers would have giant tricaster set up 20 cams you get switched between mm -hmm. uh in our casting call we'll look for people that are that are kind of into gaming because they're kind of used to looking at multiple, multiple screens, screens and yeah you know giving directives to a character and so in this villa 
there are all these dates designed to spark conversation. And mm-hmm. so while it has the appearance of a normal dating show, there is a subtle twist. There's a there's a subtle focus more on conversation where they they have to talk to each other, they have topics they have to discuss. So we're trying to see if this guy could really connect to one of these other people on just a more personal level. Because of course, at the end of the show, it's going to be revealed that he's actually this guy behind the mask. And we're yeah. going to see at the end of the show if they still get along after he's revealed. So every piece of information that the avatar says yes. is fed by the other person. Yes. So in theory, the girl or the guy, depending yeah. on who's the, the gender of the yeah. avatar, uh, has fallen in. It's like getting catfished. A little bit. You've yes. fallen in love with the personality, but with yes. a different face. Exactly. Interesting. Yes. Now, that sounds like a great show. You know? Yeah, I agree. So here's where it gets really special. So oh, no. <laughs> the entire first episode is us following this guy, his relationship with his avatar, and him trying to feel things out. At the end of this episode, we ask him, hey, who is the person that you're into the most that you think you're going to pursue for the rest of the series? And he's going to say a name. We're going to cut to that person. And then it turns out she's also an avatar. Oh, Basically, snap. what we've set up is every single contestant on this island is, is an, an avatar, avatar being puppeted by another person. How interesting. And each one of these people have been told that they are the only one and everyone else is real. And so they're operating under the assumption that the entire show is about them. Oh, snap. So even the avatar yeah. who is getting to see the physical person <laughs> is also getting the rug swept under them being like, oh, you fell in love with this tin woman who you think wouldn't normally give you the time of the day. Turns out she's also a five. Yeah, yeah. And y'all are meant for each other, <laughs> but you got to get over your own egos. Yes. I'm going to let you finish and then I have one note. Okay, okay. So let me let me define some terms. So we're going to call the contestants the people in the chair. And then the actors that are portraying them are avatars. And so... All the avatars are in on it. The contestants are not. Each contestant yeah. thinks this is their show. Oh, And wow. they're the one normal person trying to pursue all these other attractive people as an attractive person. And so we have some ground rules. So rule number one, contestants aren't allowed to kiss or do anything physical beyond some light touching. They're going to be told that this is to <laughs> build tension, but really it's it's not to put our actors in an uncomfortable place, right. not to put the avatars in an uncomfortable place. Yes. And uh, they're being fed lines uh, through various methods. Uh, there are these special sunglasses that have earpieces kind of in the back right here. That's cool. They yeah. kind of utilize the vibrations like on the outside of the ear yeah. to cause noise. And so... All of the avatars have these sunglasses and we're told at the beginning of the show that it's like, hey, this company is sponsoring us and so you have to leave these on at all times. That's interesting. And of course, every contestant secretly thinks, oh, this is explaining away me. And all the other people don't get this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so you have a really good method of communicating with them. So if a contestant starts to catch on that anyone else might be an avatar too... We have a fix for that. Okay. Because basically all of the avatars are in on it with us. Right. They know. It's only the people operating the avatars that have no idea. Yes. So if a contestant starts to think that someone else is an avatar, we're going to take some of the avatar actors together and fake some footage to where like they're in a corner being like, you know, I've noticed Joe is acting a little weird. It's like, yeah, he kind of. I asked him a question and he took like an oddly long time to answer, you know, and we start putting anxiety into them that they're about to be found out. And so they're focused more on their own stuff than other people. They're not even worried about other people. Man, you're a manipulating mastermind. (laughs) 
Yeah, yeah. This yeah. is like that time you manipulated me in one of those episodes with ChatGPT. <laughs> so it's it's funny you say that. <laughs> oh no. Oh god. <laughs> because <laughs> the the whole concept of the show is just when you think you think you have it figured out. We want to add in one more element. We don't want to just manipulate the contestants. <laughs> we also want to throw the audience for a loop too. So at the end of the second episode, <laughs> we're going to reveal that, hey, <laughs> there are 10 contestants. All 10 of them are avatars. Actually, eight of them are being puppeted by contestants and two of them are being puppeted by an AI chatbot. So... <laughs> Not only are we seeing if normal people as hot people could interact, but we're also going to test if you're hot enough, could you have no original thoughts at all and, and still, still get laid? Get... And so Whoa. <laughs> and so two of our contestants that we showed are Whoa. fake. And so there's just a really fun IT guy with a laptop. And these people have perfected the art of feeding props based on what other people say and getting an AI chatbot to feed stuff out. And so by the end of episode two, we're like, well, okay, now there are four guys, four girls that have hot avatars. And then there are two hot avatars that are actually being told what to the say by AI, AI chatbots. Yeah. Nobody knows what the other person's deal is. The basic flow of the show is going to be that in the morning, there's a group mingling in the island, you know, morning mm. breakfast, they're wandering around the pool or whatever, talking to whoever they want to. Then there is a, uh, basically we pick two people to be paired off. And so they get to have a pairing with each other person mm -hmm. and they do an activity together where there's a lot of conversation involved. Then there is a smaller group activity where like groups of four or, you know, three on three or whatever, they all do a thing. And then there is a, a nightly group gathering group activity too. And then at the very end of the night, after everyone has gone to bed, we will have a nightly meeting between the contestant and their avatar. Because mm -hmm. this is an interesting angle of the show is... You start to think, like, when you're introduced, you're just like, oh, we've cast 10, like, dumb, hot people. But then mm. you realize, no, we have cast 10 really intelligent actors. We have cast, like, yeah. you know, like a, like a Margot Robbie-level actor. That's like, yeah. they're very attractive, but also really they're doing their best to get into the character of their contestant. We're trying to make it so the only thing that's different is their appearance. And so the Avatar have spent months with these people trying to learn their mannerisms, learn how they talk, learn their body posture, kind of, you know, learn their general trying demeanor. To They're them, putting yeah. on a performance of them. Wise, yeah. And so they have a nightly debriefing about how they think the night went, what they think they could do better. So we really get to figure out this interaction between all of them. That's really fun. Yeah. And so that happens for a majority of the season and we're following the different <laughs> you know the different relationships ebbs and flows the drama two people like one person yada 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 the typical stuff that goes on but with the added element of all these contestants think like they're the only one with a secret and you know if there's any slip-ups we you know make a show of how we fix the slip up we make a show of the avatars we also check in with the avatars and see how they're feeling about the whole thing because this is a wild this is a wild for them yeah this is interesting <laughs> yeah because it's you know it's 10 really talented really actors that have to put on a whole improv based theater show wow, yeah. that is real to the people that are writing their lines and all that but uh dang son yeah yeah essentially and we plan out a bunch of activities for all the people. Like, uh, there is a there is this I think like a psychologist or something that posited the theory that anybody could fall in love with anyone if they know each other. And yeah. they wrote a series of I think it's like twenty two questions that if you and any other person answered these questions, you could feasibly fall in love with each other. And oh, so, like, cool. some of those people do that. It's activities like that, but we get to the point where it's time for the reveal. And so how we're doing it 
is the whole competition element is we're leading up to we're kind of doing this uh, this match draft where each person ranks the opposite sex from one to five based on who they want to be with the most and who they want to be with the least. And we do a bunch of math and statistics where it's like, okay, who got top billing the most? Their number one is weighted more. And we figure all that out, figure out who goes with who. And all the contestants are told that there's going to be this big ceremony where we announce who ended up with who. And then they're going to have their going to go to another place just the two of them spend a day together and decide if they really are going to be compatible if they really want to be with each other and each contestant is like oh this is the day that my true identity is going to be revealed in front of this other person that's been their real self the whole time oh boy (laughs) and so (laughs) of course what we the audience know is that this is when everybody is going to re- be revealed that they are all frauds and then they're going to spend a date with the real person they've been talking to this whole time. I think this could work. Yeah. I think this right, right. will have a higher success rate of relationships than these other shows. Yeah. So we do that whole ceremony where we basically we take the guy we first started with back when he th- we thought he was the only one. He comes out, he reveals himself as this true person, and then it's announced who he's with, and then out walks another normal person. And we just see how they react. Like, are they cool with it? Because they've been duping someone the whole time, but are they also cool getting duped? Because you know, at least one person is going to be upset. Yeah. Even though they've been doing the same thing the whole show. Yeah. And then there's also the crushing realization that they thought the whole show was about them and it's not about it's them not. anymore. Yeah. And I'm envisioning whenever we have these nightly meetings between the contestants and the avatars, when we get to the two AI puppeted people, it's just a meeting between the avatar and this really funny IT guy <laughs> that we get. <laughs> And so yeah. whenever the person who matched with the AI person is announced, the IT guy with his computer is going to walk out. <laughs> and we're going to have that whole surprise and be like, hey, you fell in love with a computer. And it's also going to be interesting to see, because you would hope that the AI people would just be dead last. Because throughout the whole show, be. they're going to be saying the most basic thing the whole time. So it's going to be interesting to see if the personality actually matters or if they're so attractive that, that it manages. <laughs> yeah, the... yeah. That's so good. But also what we're going to do is the two people that got matched with AI contestants, they're just going to be matched together. So we have two matched people. So we end the show with four couples. And the final twist for the audience is... It turns out one of the avatars hasn't actually been puppeted by anyone. Oh, it was just them. It's actually the real hot person. Another twist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Another twist at the end. So basically, we have cast an actor to play a contestant, and he's been faking meetings with an avatar the entire show. And it turns out that one person in this entire thing actually matched with the person they thought they were really talking to. So one ugly person (laughs) ends up with a perfect 10. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then it's also interesting to see where did that person rank, you know? That's so interesting. And so we have that big thing. We see their reactions. And then the final episode or two is each couple flies to their own personal vacation, just the two of them. They have an entire day of activities planned out. And we see, are they actually compatible? Do they actually like each other? After the initial shock wears off, what is the deal? And I'm assuming a lot of interesting stuff is going to happen here. Enough for a full episode, maybe a full episode and another half episode. Yeah. How do these people, you know, actually interact? Because we finally, this is the point where there's no more bells or whistles, no more Everyone's, rug pulls faking yeah. off. We're finally being real for the first time ever. Did we get at something true? Like, are these people actually bonded for real or not? And then we have a big ceremony at the finale of the show <laughs> where each person privately says, do they want to still be with the other person yes or no and there's like two buttons yeah yeah 
Oh, this is good. The person doesn't hear at first, and then we line everybody up. We go to each couple, and we tell the other person, the person you were with said yes. The person you were with said Oh, that's going to add so no. much suspense. The person you were with said yes. The person you were with also said yes. All of that. Yeah, yeah. That's so good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And that's the end of the show. Whoa. <laughs> Dude, this is amazing. This is a really great reality show. Yeah. Wow. So here's the thing about this show. It has, it's just convoluted enough to work. Yeah. Because all of these shows are mad convoluted. Yeah. And they, like, just imagine it is shot like cinematically exactly like Love is Island or yeah. Big Brother, but the audience knows every single person is being puppeted by another person. So it's like watching a video game screen. Yeah. <laughs> watching a bunch of people aimlessly kind of walk around. It's like around. watching someone play The Sims. Yeah. On YouTube. Yeah. Oh, okay. So I have a few notes. Okay. The first one being the second that the first season airs. Yeah. I don't think you can do another season. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean... But I have a fix for that. Okay. And I, I wonder if any reality shows have thought about this, especially yeah. the ones where, like, you have so many twists. Yeah. I'm sure you could come up with more twists Yeah. for each season. However, I wonder if you just shot four seasons before airing one. Yeah. Because you don't have to put it out. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, I did kind of think about that because... For starters, it kind of depends on how big the show gets. If the show right. isn't super big, you can kind of just cast people that don't know. But yeah, also, but I think this would get big. Yeah, this yeah. is great. I mean, me too. Me too. <laughs> but, <laughs> but also, there's a so there's a a big inspiration for this. Other than I want to do like Love Island meets the rehearsal. Yeah. But also a big inspiration for this was Jury Duty, the show that just yes. came out. Jury Duty is a show where. It's kind of a scripted show where there are a bunch of it's like the office if it took place in the real world. A jury, except yeah. for one person in the jury is a real person that doesn't know everybody <laughs> else is a written character. And so they they're kind of working on a second season. And so basically it's however hard, they pull it off. That's how you would pull that's it. That's how off. we're gonna follow okay. it. And then also that's we dope. could do the thing is like our whole thing is we wanna not only trick every single person here, but also trick the audience at the same time. We could do a thing where it's like, okay, we've done the same thing as the second season. Every single person is a contestant. And then we slowly start to reveal that actually that's a real person. Yeah. Actually, that's a real person too. That's actually, a fun Actually, that's one. also a real person. Yeah. That's a fun one. Yeah. I think you can come up with enough unique twists yeah. to get a few seasons out of yeah. it. Yeah. But uh, I, I did think about that while you're talking about it. Like, oh, I wonder why a reality show hasn't just like shot four seasons yeah waited to release them and yeah. then you can put them out bop 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 it's kind of you just you know it's money you need a return right. on investment you need to know if a thing worked yeah that's very interesting and then my other thing yeah i was thinking about this before a few of those twists okay i think and this could just be a uh something that i think okay i think that if you put together a group of 10 fives yeah. attractive level yeah i think they will find each other attractive like i think that you yeah the level of attractive that you are is the yeah. level of attractive you see in other people yeah now of course everyone's like oh megan fox yeah like, they're all like yeah. oh yeah perfect 10 is a perfect yeah. 10 but however i do think if you're a six you will find another six is a perfect 10 so i'm not sure yeah. if you need an avatar if all of them are the same level of attractiveness yeah this is kind of kind of what i'm going for i want because again, like the thing you don't want to do with a show like this is like judge anyone based on their appearance. Right. We're trying to cast contestants that we think would actually be compatible with yes. one another. And show them yeah. that the appearance is getting like, because there are dudes that are like threes, yeah, but they think that they deserve a 10. Exactly. Yeah. And yeah. this is letting them know. Like, yeah. Hey. Exactly. Yeah. That's really interesting. Yeah. So yeah, that's that's kind of what we're trying to do. And also like I feel like plenty of people is like they have perfectly reasonable dating standards, but they if they were asked to be on a show where they were the one normal person in a Love Island type setting, I think plenty of people would still go for that. And like, yeah. Try. Yeah, because yeah, what if what if someone's like, yeah, exactly, I liked yeah. his personality. Yeah. Or her personality. 
Yeah. It's very interesting. But yeah, it's, and, and like casting contestants is going to be like a really difficult thing because we're yeah. trying not to get anyone that's going to be uniquely terrible. But also at the same time, you need like, that drama. Some people that might surprise you, you know. I think most people are surprised. Yeah. You. Especially when you do that first reveal yeah. of the show's not about them. Yeah. I think that's when it gets, yeah. when they've been duped as well. I yeah. think that's when people get upset. That's funny. Dude, that's a great yeah. show. I thought I had this one in the bag, <laughs> but then you you turn into Mark Burnett. Uh-huh. Bar- Mark Burnett. He's the guy that produces uh, Survivor yeah. and all those big yeah. reality shows. Yeah. It really, like, I think, like, ultimate theme of the show is just kind of people put a lot of weight on physical appearance, but, like, for the most part, you ask anybody that's together, it's usually just the right context. Yeah two people that have similar personalities just met at the right time where both of those personalities came out in a yeah. good way. Like a lot of it is based on the other factors. And yeah. Well, it's like if you have a friend group yeah. for long enough, yeah, someone's going to start dating someone in exactly. that friend group yeah. because there's always going to be like someone in that friend group who might not be that attractive, but yeah. they're really funny. Exactly. And the next thing you know, yeah. you know, yeah. It's yeah. Just- and is that attraction strong enough that, these people stay together even after we revealed they've we've been lying that, to them the that entire one of them time. is ai <laughs> <laughs> that that is the part i'm most excited about because i i anticipate two it guys becoming like the comic relief characters yeah and also <laughs> imagine the crushing reality if that you end up taste... with someone <laughs> and they they weren't even bottom ranked. They were like number three ranked. And the number three person was just a, a computer. Chat. A chat bot, dude. That's hilarious. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, that's you could a... do a you could do a twist in the second season or the third season mm-hmm. where uh, one of them is uh instead of it being AI, one of them is literally just a guy reading random pages from a book. Yeah. I uh I did think that one uh one fun little thing you could do like if you if we had like a little competition and someone won a challenge or something yeah for thirty minutes you get to have help feeding lines from like a professional comedian or something like we oh <laughs> that's cool we bring in Theo Vaughn to be he's like all right. he's like right. I hey, got dude. some pickup lines for you uh, hey man ask her if she's ever uh, wrestled a hippo. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah. Be like, hey, baby girl. Yeah. You ever been two feet in a in a hippo's mouth, baby? Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> and then Man, also, that's, that's an interesting thing because, like, if we have a as like a little lifeline, if you feel it low, you get to cash in your. Uh, I get to have help for an hour. Yeah. Do they notice that they're talking a little and different? The personality is different. Yeah. yeah. That's cool. That's yeah. Hey. <laughs> There's a lot you can do. I think, it, and then, you know, like in season four, when it starts to get stale, yeah. you can do a thing where you have a constant rotation where you get a different avatar every day. Yeah. Yeah. And you find out who yeah. you're the most compatible with. Yeah. But with and the, the thing is, it's like you have real drama between the real relationships in the show, but also, like, my favorite thing about my favorite reality shows, about Nathan Fielder shows, about yeah. jury duty, is also just. The mechanics of how the ruse works is works. so interesting. Yeah. Jury duty, the entire last episode is just about how they did it. And, and it's, it's the most fun episode. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That yeah. that's the interesting stuff to me. Right. And then you add that to also relationship drama. I think everybody's on board. Yeah, because I think you get the people that casually watch those shows. Yeah. And then you get the people that are like also kind of like uh I mean, people who like Nathan Fielder shows are kind of a little bit more like film bros or just like super into media, chronically online people maybe. I think you get both. Yeah, yeah. And even like all the regular love shows, like, again, I don't watch them now, but the reason like I did get invested with them when I was watching them is like there is a, just a, a sociological thing yeah that is really interesting just watching different people interact with each other and i think like normal dating shows like a lot of people don't realize that that element's in there but if we add like a bunch of other stuff like we could allow that to flourish yeah. more dude we we know someone who's worked production on a ton of reality shows. really hey, uh doug the grip oh that's right yeah yeah, yeah. man man <laughs> 
That's a great show. Yeah. That, that was really great. <laughs> the Hot Bubble. Yeah. Man, that's a good show. Yeah. It's either, we're either calling it that or, I don't know the whole, like, if 30 Rock calls and it's like, you can't do that. We made that up. Love then, uh, Avatar, maybe? Love Peninsula. Love or Peninsula. Something with Avatars, you know. Avatar's good. The only thing with Avatars, there's also, there's The Last Airbender and James Cameron. So it's like, what are you? Yeah, you but that, that makes it a familiar enough term for people. Sure. Okay. Because Avatar is just used as a general yeah. term. Yeah. Like a, a game avatar. Yeah. Hey, <laughs> that was really great. Thanks. Hey. All right. Y'all ready am, for mine? <laughs> I am. I'm ready for yours. You have hyped this up a lot. So. Well, now that I've heard yours, mine's not that cool. Okay. So, and this wasn't completely my idea. This was okay. my my wife's idea a few years ago. Oh, okay. And then we worked on it together. Okay. It was, it's called Scratch Off. <laughs> okay. Basically what happens, and mine pitch is nowhere near as long. Okay. It's really just a premise. Okay. <laughs> There's no twists or anything. Okay. It could be like a uh, a very. It's almost like a uh, uh, American Pickers style show. Okay. Where you just have like one episode. Yeah. You, it doesn't. It's not a whole season with the same contestants or anything yeah. like that. So scratch off. You start off with uh, the way we did it when we shot the test was we had two teams. Yeah. And basically both teams start off. With a certain amount of money. You get $20, $50, $100. <laughs> then what you do is you drive all around the city to different gas stations and buy lottery tickets. Okay. And at the end of the episode, whoever has the most money from lottery tickets wins the episode. And they and what they win is all of the money left from the other teams. Okay. And it, and it sounds pretty simple, but it gets complicated because there's there are rules, Okay. Because it's like, okay, so if you start off with, say, $50, okay. your team starts off with $50. Maybe it's two people. We did it with two teams of, like, five people. Yeah. But you could do, you know, multiple teams of two people or, or however you want to break it up. Mm-hmm. You start off with $50. And then you go – what you could do is you're like, well, I have $50. If the other teams spend their $50 and don't win anything, they'll all go broke. And I could keep my $50 and win, right? So it's a risk. Yeah. So you could say, okay, I'm just going to not buy any lottery tickets. I'm going to go ahead and lock in $50. Okay. And that's a risk, but yeah. it could pay off. Say another team, they they have $50. They're like, okay, we're only going to spend 25 of our $50 mm-hmm. on lottery tickets. If we win a few of them, we could end up with more than $50. But we have a fail safe of $25. So no matter what, we sure. won't go below $25. Yeah. And then you have an irresponsible team where they spend all 50 of their dollars and they yeah. don't win. The second you run out of money, you're out. Yeah. You're eliminated. So what's like, in your experience, like you said, you you tested this out a yeah. little. Like how, how how much money do you like, can you normally get you, off that? Like do you, do you, you get like actually, 20 $50? You can win you money. And yeah. so that's the super exciting thing, right? Okay. For like a network TV show yeah. is what happens when someone wins big money? Yeah. That's crazy. Because there is always the possibility someone could get like a million dollars. <laughs> right. Yeah. Or even a thousand dollars. Like yeah. there's a possibility that you can get a big chunk of change. But yeah. there's also a possibility that you don't get anything at all. Yeah. It's purely up to chance, which is what the lottery is. Sure. So uh, like when we did it, uh, you go to these different gas stations and you and you, and you you have to strategic. Like there is a strategy of like, okay, well, let's only spend five dollars here. And if we get a five dollar lottery ticket – you're more likely to win than if you bought five $1 lottery tickets. But if you buy five $1 lottery tickets, you're more likely to get your $5 back. Yeah. You know, and so it's like, well, maybe we should spend, get a $10 lottery ticket because then you can win $100. You can win $500. Mm-hmm. So there's a, there's a ton of strategy to it. And then at the end of the episode, the winning team, which is with the team with the most money, what you win is all of the earnings from every team. Yeah. So if you have multiple teams, and that's where like the drama and the randomness mm-hmm. and the chance comes in. <clears throat> if you have a team that got lucky and they have like three hundred dollars from their original fifty dollars, they're like, "Oh, we're a shoe in to win." Yeah, and you could keep going, but there's a time limit. Mm-hmm. So it's like you could keep going, and maybe you can turn that three hundred and four, five, six, seven, or you're out of time. You think, okay, we have three hundred dollars. Let's just stop here. You hit the pause, right? Yeah. And then somebody else somehow got three hundred and ten dollars. 
Mm-hmm. Now that team that won three hundred and ten dollars gets your three hundred dollars yeah. as well as everything else. I think this is a great idea for a show. Yeah, that's that's it. That's the show. <laughs> so, uh, what kind of contestants are you getting? Because like there is there's the personality. A, there's a gambling aspect to it, which yeah. you got to circumvent. But it it would be incredibly funny if you find like a bunch of normal people and then just the biggest gambling addict <laughs> and put them. On a... <laughs> well, that's the thing, right? So we had we did this when we were in college. So we had yeah. two teams of just college students. Uh-huh. And and that's where the show is interesting, right? Like the money stuff is interesting, yeah. but it's also you're following around people. Yeah. And so funny moments happen. You know, yeah. you have a team of people arguing at the gas station of like, which one should we get? Let's get this lottery ticket. No, let's get this lottery ticket. Yeah. And then the cashier gets involved. <laughs> uh-huh. Like it's it's a I think it's a great show. Yeah. 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 But it's not a very complex show. <laughs> sure. Yeah. I mean, I like it, yeah. I wonder if there's if there's just one more element that could be added, like uh like if the contestants don't have a car or aren't allowed to use their phones for maps and they like also have to physically find gas oh. stations or So if you put them in like a big city yeah. where it's like a walkable city. Like kind of what I'm thinking of is a uh, if you could also add an element of we've been We've been doing some edit work on a travel show, and uh, yeah. the best episode of the travel show is when they they also explore the city a little more than yeah. the other episodes. And uh, that's a good point. If there's also like, you know, the scavenger hunt aspect of we're looking for gas stations in a place we don't no. know, then uh, yeah. So the version because the did, only thing is is like it's not it's not like that cinematic if the entire thing is just at a cashier's statement, but if you also like, yeah, there's an exploration element to it. Yeah. And the version we did, people were in cars. And so a lot yeah. of the footage was in people's car trying to okay. find gas yeah. stations. Yeah. Well, that, that's exactly like the show we were working on. Is we found that when you get out of the car for that's a little bit. That's where the fun it, stuff yeah. happens. So yeah, maybe putting them in a walkable city yeah. with several gas stations. Yeah. And they just have to find them on their own. That would add a lot. Because yeah. something funny that was in the episode we shot mm-hmm. was uh, two teams, both teams went to the same gas station. Yeah. And when the second team <laughs> showed up, the first team wasn't there anymore. Yeah. But the cashiers were like, are you with the other people that just ran in? And we're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. What tickets did they buy? How much money did they get? And then yeah. they were like, we were trying to do the math. of like, oh. Okay, they ended up winning $10. So we need to make sure we win. Like, yeah. they have at least $10 now. That's so funny. like it's a huge. I think it's yeah. So how how did the the pilot turn out that you? It shot? was good. Yeah. I never put it out. Why but it you, was. Why good. did you never put it out? Because it, I mean, well, okay, production wise, probably wasn't the best. Okay. I was in college. I was learning. Yeah. But like as a show, it mm-hmm. went well. Like people won money. Yeah. How much money total was given to the winning team? I don't remember. It was so yeah. long ago. But I have it on YouTube. We can watch it. And maybe okay. I can put the unlisted link in the description so that you guys can yeah. watch it. But we can watch it after this if you'd like. I do want to watch this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, it was, and this was uh, Elizabeth's idea at first. Nice. And then we worked it out. Nice. So, yeah. shout out to Elizabeth. What is fun about that is that is unlike mine that involves like millions of dollars of production, months of preparation. You could do this right now. Oh yeah, and we we've done right it. Now. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> we did it as broke college students. Yeah, and I think the part that excites me the most is because, like, in a lot of shows, it's random, but someone had to set that up. Yeah, a producer, someone had to set up that yeah. randomness. The U.S. government <laughs> has set up the lottery system. Yeah. you yeah. really have no idea if a team is going to win a million dollars. Yeah. <laughs> which I doubt would happen on a, on a scratch off lottery ticket, uh-huh. but you never know. Yeah. And if you shoot enough episodes, someone will probably win yeah. $10,000. Like it's you never know. Yeah. And I think that's the part that makes it so exciting. Yeah. I also think the uh involving one gambling addict in episode like, that's but funny if you pair a gambling addict with the person you've deemed to be like the most conservative and safe someone who's never the same team done the lottery yeah. before yeah. yeah that's funny and then they're arguing yeah. of like hey let's do another ticket no we yeah. we've got 40 dollars. we've already lost 10 of our starting money they could you know be at zero like there is a strategy to it. Yeah. And seeing different people's point yeah. of view on that strategy. I bet also 
if you raise the amount of money they started with a little bit, but also said you don't have a car, you have to spend money on Ubers to certain places. Oh snap! So then you have to consider. Well, how I mean, how does how have. does it work? Like, uh, do you? What's incentivizing people to go to multiple gas stations if it's all uh, the same? Because so here's the thing. At and this was a part of the show. Okay. One t- you don't tell anyone, yeah. but. Um, some gas stations will have how many prizes are left. Oh, yeah. So if okay. you look and you see scratch off lottery ticket number three has zero prizes left. Yeah. Don't buy that one. There's You're not going to win any yeah. money. But they don't always put it out. So sometimes you have to yeah. ask for it. Okay. So if you go to multiple gas stations, yeah. you have a better chance of you know switching it up instead of buying all at the same gas station. Okay. Yeah. yeah. yeah but yeah. that's a strategy. You could just spend all of it at the one gas uh-huh. station if you wanted to. Yeah. I think, uh, I mean, the final thing to bring it home, if you had, if you had some really fun hosts, like maybe one person with each team, that's like fun. a, like a Nathan Fielder type person that like, yeah. if they decided, oh, we just, we spent all our money in one place. We're done. We're just going to hope for the best. You have a guy there that's just like, well, we have five random people with different backgrounds that are just kind of here. Let's start some conversation and see oh, what happens. I wonder if on each team you put uh, – maybe they don't know that they're the host. Like they're not – they don't yeah. – it's a, it's a hidden yeah. thing. One of the contestants on each team is like someone from the show, yeah. the production team. Yeah. And so they are feeding the the lines and controversy to try to rile everybody up. Yeah. And so you got like you can start fights that way yeah, or you yeah. could like try like if they try to spend all their yeah. money in one place, that doesn't make for good TV. So yeah. you're like, "Well, hey guys, how about we Yeah. This uh this idea doesn't quite work for a reality show, but something I've always wanted to see happen. It's not an original idea. Some random person, I forget on the internet said this, mm-hmm. but if you did just a normal sport like football, soccer, you know, football yeah. everywhere else, you play it exactly normal, but each person has one teammate that secretly played for the other team <laughs> and tried to sabotage them. That's fun. And so you play like that, but also the catch is that at the end of every quarter, the whole team votes on who they think the mole that's, is. That's the reality <laughs> show, The Mole. Yeah, exactly. There's a show called The Mole. Exactly, yeah. So if The Mole is found out, then they get a huge point bonus or they lose or something. Yeah. So the secret agent has to try to sabotage them, but subtly enough that they, they don't, don't get notice. voted off the team. Can you imagine just being so bad one day <laughs> yeah. that you get voted off the team? <laughs> and you're just bad. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so uh, that reminds me, I have another idea for a reality show. Okay. I don't know, have you ever played, it's a it's a kind of board game but it's very interactive it's called two rooms and a boom no i haven't we played it in college a lot it's one of these games where each person is kind of assigned a role yeah and you're in two different rooms and you can trade off people from room to room and basically you don't want the person with the bomb Mm -hmm. in your room at the end of the game it's a very complex game but it's a lot of fun yeah and i always thought doing something like that but Kind of like a Mr. Beast video. You take a, a board game like that, but you do it high stakes as a reality show. Yeah. I, I uh, Another thing I did in college is like a, a test show. The, the board game Secret Hitler. Yeah. Have you ever played that or seen yeah, that? Yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, sh- I have seen this. Yeah. I've seen this video. We yeah. shot that, but as a reality show. Yeah. So like you would pull someone into the booth, talk about it. There's something really interesting about board games yeah, as reality exactly. shows. Exactly. And even... Uh, this final idea to bring up there was there was a point where uh, a network was interested in some stuff from us yeah like some low budget stuff you and had a really good idea i for pitched it. a reality yeah. show it was a uh, it was like a sports thing it was like extreme foursquare i think was yeah, the thing, yeah where it's yeah. like we get six teams together they compete in competitive foursquare but then we add all sorts of additional challenges to make it like way more extreme than a normal game of foursquare i could be wrong but i think your pitch was like you play extreme versions of youth group games exactly yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. and so like either we would do an episode of that or if there was enough material just in foursquare we do an entire season of that an entire yeah. season of a different youth group game but a there's a, I was really careful in this pitch not to rip these people off exactly because they have a similar kind of show to what you were talking about, but they do extreme versions of board games. Oh, yeah. They've done a, 
it's like a extreme monopoly but with real money yeah they play monopoly with real money i need to watch that because you've told me about that before and it's i really want to fun. watch it and then they did a, a whole season where they played like extreme mini golf where it was like a mini golf but they're you know just additional elements to it that make it more complicated than normal mini golf uh who what channel did it oh it was it was rooster teeth rooster teeth, rooster teeth. yeah okay 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 but yeah guys that's a that's a reality tv show ideas uh be sending in suggestions for future rival pitch episodes because we're we're doing the last few of the season and we need some ideas this was a great idea thank you for matthew for yeah bringing that this was up fun dude yeah. it makes me want to do a reality show i know i think we could do it we get a, yeah. can you imagine we get a bunch of actors yeah for this reality show we get the whole production team you directing we could have something really fun yeah. maybe do it for the written by channel or something yeah I don't know, <laughs> but it's fun. Thanks for listening. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I have an idea for a dating show. So this is going to be like a Love Island type show where we have 10 supermodel looking people all in a villa together, all trying to pair up. But one of these people isn't really a contestant. He is an actor with an earpiece. And behind the earpiece is a completely normal looking guy that is telling the attractive guy what to say. So we're going to see if the normal guy could still end up finding a partner of his dreams, even though he's masquerading as a different person. Now, we're gonna go through the whole episode as he is piloting this actor as like his avatar, seeing if he could win over one of these supermodels. But then at the end of the first episode, we're gonna reveal that every single contestant is actually an actor that has a normal person behind them. And they all think that the show is about them. And we're gonna see how they react react when we reveal everything. This week on our show, we pitched reality TV show ideas, and my reality TV show is called Scratch Off. Basically, you have a bunch of contestants, and they all start off with a budget. I don't know how much money. It's whatever you want to do for the season. $50, $1,000, $100, but you go out and you buy Scratch Off tickets, and whoever has made the most money, or has the most money remaining at the end of the episode, wins everybody's prizes so there's a lot of strategy that can go into it you know if your opening budget is a hundred dollars and you choose to just pocket the one hundred dollars and not buy any scratch off tickets and everyone else ends up losing more money than they spend you can win the episode not buying any scratch off tickets however if you risk it and i mean if you do enough episodes of this show someone's gonna make some big money imagine Getting a scratch off ticket for several thousand dollars, you win the episode, you get to keep that several thousand dollars and what everybody else made. So scratch off is the next big reality show coming to you. The reality show outro. Yeah. Thank you so much for listening to that. That was that was a really fun episode that, to to make. Yeah, that was cool. Cause that was fun. You had a baller reality <laughs> show idea. And then I was pretty happy with mine, but when I heard yours, I was like, oh, they're going to buy that from you immediately because that's exactly what they're looking for. Yeah, it would it would take so much money to make. But imagine, <laughs> I feel like stuff like that is just the best way to spend money. Like oh, that. yeah. Like if, if, this, Psychologically This is what I don't people. like about a lot of these big movies coming out. If you're going to spend tens of millions of dollars, I yes. feel like you should be obligated to do something insane. Yes, you got to use that money for a bad cause. <laughs> uh, speaking of bad causes, uh -huh. I have the results for the supervillain rival pitches. Ooh, our okay. previous rival pitch. Yeah. And the winner is... Me. It's you. Man. I'm flying away yeah, with it this that season. Puts you, that puts you pretty ahead. But you there's still a ahead. few left for you to catch up for yeah. the finale. And then I think... Last season, we went into the finale tied. Yeah. It makes it complicated if we don't go in tied. So maybe we need to add some extra stakes over, like, it counts for, like, two or three. So this is what I was thinking. Mm -hmm. This is what I was thinking. We we went into last season tied. If we want to give the finale some more stakes, I feel like you're... I think you're ahead by two or three. Mm -hmm. And we have one more pitch left. Uh, I think since we have three judges, each judge oh. votes. And each judge vote counts.
counts as a vote. That's so good. That gives me a fighting chance. So you're you still going in with with a an advantage. big advantage, yeah. but uh, you can get up to three votes. Yeah, that's that's a good idea. Yeah, because then it could be like, well, okay, I've got a three vote buffer. Yeah, which means even if I suck, I can still come out of this with a tie. Like there's a strategy to yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, man, that's a really great idea. That's what we're going to do. That's what okay. we're going to do. Yeah. Hey, thank you guys so much for watching. You can email us suggestions. We don't have that many episodes left to record, so right now is the time. Yeah. Writtenbypodcast at gmail.com. Follow us on all of our social medias at writtenbypod or writtenbypodcast. Yep. And, uh, again, be voting on Rival Pitches, and stay tuned for our Rival Pitch finale. We're going to be yeah. putting a lot into it. We're going to be doing our favorite Rival Pitch that we've each done this season and we're gonna build out a whole pitch deck and we're gonna cut a trailer for it so and then we pitch it to three guest judges and they vote for who they think is the best yeah if you have not seen last year's finale watch it it's a blast won't be doing it again yeah guys stay tuned it's gonna be really fun see ya see you next week